Hello, brothers and sisters. It's your brother in Christ, Diamond Dustification from YouTube again. And uh, right off the bat, I want to welcome all the new subscribers to the channel, okay? I'm still getting back on my feet, and uh, there's still a lot of problems going on around the house and around the neighborhood here. But nonetheless, I want to make this video to, uh, well, keep, keep the momentum going, so to speak. I also want to pray a prayer of blessing over you. I pray that the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, would lay a firm grasp upon your hearts. I also pray for... For your relief both spiritually and physically and not just yours but also that of your pets that of your family that of your friends and everybody else in your life that the lord would would don to heal okay i pray that he would be with you in all things and help you with your ailments and your and your troubles i pray for the conversion for all those in your life that have yet to believe and trust on jesus christ whether they be family friends or strangers or those that you are evangelizing to and i rebuke in the name of Jesus Christ and God the Father, any and all wicked spirits that may be active in your lives. And not only do I rebuke them, but I ask that they be thrown into the abyss until the day of their judgment. Okay? I pray that you would be protected in the turbulent times that we live in. Because even though these are exciting times, because the, our Lord and Savior is soon to return for his bride, and that is us, the church, they are also difficult times because the world has turned its back on God, the wider world. Okay? And it is falling into a state of chaos as a result. In today's video, we're going to be talking about an enduring faith. Because every time I mention that in my comment sections or even in some of my videos, there's always someone that seems to take issue with it. And I understand why, for those of you that have done that. The Lord Shippers have turned it into something that is personal and outward. You know, that, that is to say that they think it's about personal self-effort. And the Calvinists have essentially done the same thing and have trampled the meaning of this into the dust. And I want to stay off the bat here that I am someone that believes faith will endure, but not in the sense that you might think. Now, I know the kind of objections that that will raise, and I'm actually going to read one to you right here. I was having a discussion on my last video with, with Michael here, talking about Acts 2.38, okay? And I said this, True faith will endure the trials of life and recover from its falters. It's usually very easy to spot a fake. Now, on its own, that might not make any sense and might seem like work salvation. And that's exactly what my one of my longtime subscribers, Shana, pointed out. But I'm going to uh, talk about this. So bear with me here. True faith will endure, she says, question mark, talking to me. I don't know what you mean by that. I was saved, but in false religion and confused, but backslid for 10 years. In that time, I certainly didn't endure. It wasn't until three years ago when I found Renee Rowland's channel that I came to a knowledge of grace and realized I was always saved. I knew from that time on my salvation had nothing to do with me. It was all God. Now that paragraph right there is proving the point that I was trying to make. Her faith endured her backslidden state. She was saved, but despite, and despite being in a false religion and wrapped up in false religion, she got saved because she understood the true gospel of saving faith at some point. But she was confused and backslid. In that time, she did endure. Her faith endured. She didn't, but her faith did. You understand? When people say, we will endure, they're saying that we must outwardly, by the flesh, endure. And that's not... That's not true. We can falter, we can fail. Romans 7, 15 through 25. But our faith endures. It wasn't until three years ago when I found Renee Rowland's channel that I came to a knowledge of grace and realized I was always saved. And I knew that my... Exactly. If you're always saved, that means your faith will endure. Despite the trials of life. You understand? From that time on, my salvation had nothing to do with me. It was all God. Precisely. That's why your faith endures, because it doesn't have anything to do with you. He saved me and he kept me. Exactly. I had the witness of the Holy Spirit telling me that. Exactly. Keeping you in the faith. What does that even mean? Well, you just pretty much summed it up. Sorry, but that sounds like our self-effort is involved in salvation. No. If an enduring faith meant that you had to endure of your own self-effort and remain in a certain state of faith in order to remain saved, then it would be about self-effort. But if you're telling me, as you said in this comment, and as I meant to say here, and that's exactly what, what Michael goes on to explain here, that our faith will endure because our faith is kept by the power of God and the promises of God are without repentance, then you understand that it's all about faith. 
not to sound confrontational, she says, Diamond, but that sounds very confusing. Now, Michael comes back, and I thank you, Michael, if you're watching this video, and tells her what he means is exactly what you stated. Your faith will always be there. You will always be saved, even if you backslide or have a crisis of faith. Your saving faith will always endure, even when your life is a train wreck due to bad choices, because God keeps you saved. Hope that helps. He isn't teaching at all works, or your or you yourself must endure, rather that your faith and you being saved will always endure due to the God keeping you saved no matter what you do. She then talks about a verse, Godly sorrow worketh repentance, and it's actually in context, a letter to the church in regards to a man caught in sin. It's nothing to do with how we earn salvation. Well, yeah, of course. Okay. If that was the case, we would all have to work up some sort of emotion or feeling and how much is enough in order for God to save us. That's self-effort. The video Renee did is titled Repent Series, Godly Sorrow Worketh Repentance Unto Salvation. Anyway, let's, let's stay on topic here. This is my response to her about enduring faith. Michael pretty much summed it up. Every time I talk about faith enduring, there's always someone around the corner to tell me how they backslid for so and so many years and therefore failed to endure. That's ex absolutely the case. I've had this, uh, I'm, not, I'm not being confrontational there. I'm simply explaining the fact. The problem with these individuals is that they're a living testament to the opposite and proving exactly the point that I was trying to make. That is the example of St. Peter. 2,000 plus years later, they are proving it. But a warped view of what endurance actually means has been caused by the Calvinist and trample, who have trampled it into the dust and lordshippers who have destroyed the context. Shana backslid into a state of disobedience, but her faith remained within her because she herself, whether she herself noticed it or not. And she was recovered by the power and grace of God. But even if she had died in that state, she still would have been saved because that too is an example of enduring faith because it's inner, spiritual, and not outward, and the promises of God endure forever. I have yet to encounter a backslider in all my years that stated when I was when they were backslid that they knew in their hearts that they lost salvation. Okay? I never quite understand why there is so much pushback to the idea of an enduring faith. When I when especially when I add in the context of it. it it's the reality and has everything to do with God and nothing to do with you. I don't care what anyone has to say otherwise because the Bible declares it. And that is absolutely true. Every single child of God will endure chastisement, okay? If, but if you be without chastisement, wherefore all are partakers, then you are bastards and not sons. Hebrews 12, 8. That's a one verse that I show on this channel quite a bit, and here's another one. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. <clears throat> Finally, we got Luke 22, where we find Jesus' foretelling of Peter's denial. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon. Now, we could, we could replace that name, Simon, with any name of a truly born-again believer, in a way. He, he would come to you and he would say, Behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, says Jesus Christ, that thy faith fail not. So the faith will not fail, despite Satan buffeting you. And when thou art converted from your backslidden state, strengthen your brethren. And that's exactly what happened with Shana. She's, she was buffeted by Satan and wrapped up in falsehoods and confusion. But Jesus Christ was in her corner praying for her that her faith fail not. And because of that, she did her faith did not fail because it was kept by the power of God. And eventually she was converted from that and strengthened her brethren in the truth of grace and eternal security, and my, among many other things. But the big question is, is what happens if we die in a state, a backslidden state? Well, you will remain safe because the promises of God endure. Okay? You will lose a lot of reward and your life here in this flesh will be very miserable because you will be enduring the chastisement of God. A child of light cannot live in darkness in glee. You understand? It is only someone that is a reprobate, a false convert at best. In fact, I don't even know if I should say at best because a false convert has is that much more unlikely to be saved because they've hardened their hearts to the truth and believe themselves saved so they don't they, they're no longer seeking after Jesus Christ okay they're caught in a vicious cycle it's actually easier to save someone who is an out and out atheist it's unfortunate okay 
I often ha I said this in the previous videos about the mark of the beast. If you've taken the mark of the beast, you have been given over to complete and total reprobation. That means that you are beyond salvation because you have decided to worship Satan knowingly and gleefully. At that point, you will have a hatred for God. So people that think that they're outside salvation, okay, that they can't be saved, you understand that if you even have to worry, if you're even worried about that, if you have to come and ask me if you're outside of salvation, you're proving that you're not. Do you understand? Now, there's a whole big, giant uh, the conversation about blaspheme, blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Many people, even on Grace Channel, seem to think that that's the one sin we can commit that will cause us to become unsaved. That's not true. A saved person cannot blaspheme the Holy Spirit. That's what John is talking about when he says, shall not commit sin, among many other things. There's a lot of things to unpack there. I have a video about that, and if you want to watch it, I recommend you check it out. You'll find it in my Once Saved, Always Saved playlist. My brother in Christ, Mr. Christian, has also talked about this at length. Okay, Suffice it to say, a simple way to comfort yourself would be this, and it's a biblical way too. If you were beyond salvation, you would not be worried about salvation. If you were beyond salvation, you would not be worried about getting saved or, about, or whether or not you were beyond salvation because it would be the reality. And you would no longer be being called by God because all have turned out of the way. There is none that seeketh after God. Okay? We can find that in Paul's epistles, I believe. Let me see. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. Even your faith is a gift. God called you. If you're not receiving that calling because you're outside of salvation, you will not seek after God. Even when you were yet unsaved and an enemy to God, he was there at your side calling you. So if he left your side, you would no longer seek him. That's the big principle here that you need to understand. Now, back to the point. If you fall into a backslidden state, you're going to be a very miserable Christian. Very, very miserable because you cannot have fellowship with darkness any longer. Sin loses the joy that it, and the pleasures that it once provided. Okay? Because it, it, at that point, you recognize it for what it is. At that point, you can feel in, on a deep level, a spiritual level, the Holy Spirit within you weeping in Jesus Christ as well. Sometimes the very tears that he weeps will, will roll right out of your eyes and down your face and cheeks. You will feel the chastisement of God, and you will know that, he, that the Holy Spirit had better things for you because he will come to you and convict you to righteousness. Now, there's a big difference between being convicted to righteousness and convicted to condemnation. But there are some people that die in that state, as the man in 1 Corinthians 5, 5 was close to doing. He was handed over unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit might be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. 1 Corinthians 5.5 5. You're not going to lose your salvation, but your faith will endure whether you remain in that state or not. You, don't, you will not want to remain in that state. Now some people will think I'm promoting a license to sin here, but if you're going to try to walk in sin as a saved Christian, you're going to know it. Because it's going to come down on you hard. Okay? You can't, it's just, that's just the way it is. The Bible declares it over and over again. Hebrews 12, 1 Peter 1, 5, 1 Corinthians 5, 5. You have the Holy Spirit, the witness within you, reminding you that you are a child of God and, the, and of the promises that have been given and granted unto you. You will not lose your salvation. Your faith will endure because God's promises endure. That's what it's about spiritual realities that God has firmly in his grasp. It's not about you enduring at a certain level of success in your life, which is what the Calvinist and the Lord Chippers have turned this into. That's not what it is. So the next time you hear me talking about how your faith will endure, consider this video as my answer to your question. Now, I'm sure that I will have to continue to answer and respond to this particular objection in my comment sections as new uh, subscribers come along. And as this video continues to fall further and further back into uh, uh, past videos. But I hope that this clears the issue up. So God bless you, brothers and sisters. Amen and amen. And I, and I will get to the, my video about enduring to the end. Because I know that that verse is continuing to be beaten to death.
All right.